you coin lickers out there, thank you so much for coming to the Global Detection Adventures radio podcast. I think you guys are going to love this show this week. Today is November 4th, 2018, and you coin lickers are listening to me, Lance Goolsby, the king of the coin lickers, the guy who's always popping coins in his mouth and whenever he digs them out of the ground because he does not want to brush them or scrape them. So, uh, yeah, you're going to have a really good show. Today, it's going to be a little bit different, uh, a really, really fun little bit going on today. We're going to go down under, okay, let me try and, let me try and work this. Uh, we're going down under, we're going to be talking with Dig in Australia. He's going to be down there in New South Wales, and he's going to be talking about all the metal detecting that he's doing and bottle hunting. Crikey, that's a lot of stuff going on down there. Okay, that's all I'm going to do. All right, we're going to be doing that. And uh, then we're going to be going over some of the finds this week. Been a really good week. Uh, I haven't really got a chance to go over your guys' finds in the last couple weeks. So I'm going to make up for a little bit of time today. And... um, Yeah, we're going to have some really, really good fun. But uh, for right now, what I want to do is I want to uh, give you guys the opportunity to uh, listen to one of our sponsors. I'm going to go ahead and play this for you. And then we're going to be playing the... uh, the interview with um, Digging Australia. Just remember, it's not live. This was recorded earlier today at about 10 o'clock my time, uh, which would have been uh, about a 1,000 hours ago for you guys in the United States. Uh, so don't try and ask any questions to them right now. Feel free to talk with me. I'm going to be online and chatting with you guys. If you don't, uh, if you're not already a member of the Global Detection Adventures Facebook group, make sure you head over to Facebook and click on Global Detection Adventures and find that group, I'll definitely bring you guys in and join the fun and the conversation right there online. Yeah, Okay, you guys uh, are really, really filling up the comment box. Love it. Thank you, every single one of them. I want to say a big thanks to Harold, Josh, Andy, Wayne, and Luke. Luke, I want to get in touch with you today, buddy. I get to find out what went on today. All right. But for now, this is one of our new advertisers. I want you guys to listen to this advertisement. Is it possible that you're in the market for a brand new metal detector? Or you got a metal detector, but you want to look for something that's uh, better or has more compatibility with the way that you metal detect? Well, let me tell you about the Rutus Alter 71. Check it out at rutus.com.pl. The Rutus Alter 71 has 71 frequencies to choose from. Yes, I actually just said that. 71 frequencies. It also has the ability, let's say that you're out metal detecting, you want to make sure that certain objects create a certain sound. You can assign certain VDI numbers a certain sound. That is is amazing it fully a fully customizable metal detector that is a mid-range device we're not talking a upper price level machine we're talking a mid-level machine here that has high quality functionality this is not the typical mid-level machine this thing has 71 uh, uh, frequencies, like I just said. That's why it has the name Alter 71. It also has a dual mode. The dual mode allows you to more easily discriminate between objects that are in the ground. You'd only need one detector for large and small objects. Uh, the eight reaction levels, yes, eight reaction levels, And the dual mode helps you better identify good targets above or below crap targets. Yes, I just said that. This is one of the most amazing machines that you can get for this price range. You do not need to know anything about these high-quality machines or any of these high-speed machines. You can almost jump right into the Alter 71 and get going. And if you have questions, check it out online. Check it out on YouTube. You can find everything right there. I'm a dummy. I'm a complete dummy. And I can metal detect with this thing. And that should say something. Imagine having a machine that has motion discrimination. Yes, motion discrimination. You swing over an object and there's two things in the ground. But as you're swinging, it 
accurately discriminates between the two objects. Iron, silver, iron, silver, iron, silver. It is that amazing. So make sure you go to rutus.com.pl. That's R-U-T-U-S dot com dot P-L. And check out this great machine. You will love it. All right, guys. Let's get on with the show. All right. Uh, yeah, check out Rudus. I know you guys will love the machines. Uh, they sponsor the show now. Couldn't be happier. Thank you, Rudus, for coming in to join us. And uh, now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going to that interview that I had with Jacob earlier today. Like I said, uh, it's not live. Uh, so feel free to chat with me. I'm going to be in the chat right there and uh, and talking with you guys. Matt, how are yo? How you doing, brother? Man. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to be in there in the chat. Uh, but for now, here's the Jacob interview. Let's listen to what he had to say. Well, thanks, Lance. Uh, with me right now, out of Australia, is one of Australia's uh, best-known metal detectors, Jacob, also known as Digging Australia. Thanks, Jacob, for coming on to the show. It has been quite a few moons. I think last time you were on the show, you were 12 or 13 years old. Yeah, thanks for having me back on. Yeah, it has been about yeah two or three years now. Yeah. I was about... Yeah, 12, I think, 13. Yeah, you've been digging for quite a while. I think last time we talked, they, you said that you started at about eight years old? Uh, yeah, I started off at about eight, just for like a, just with a cheap toy metal detector, and then I uh, got back into it in December 2013. That's fantastic. Now, you're in yeah. New South Wales, Australia. Now, uh, what do you know about uh, the area where you metal detect as far as the history and everything that goes on down there? Uh, well, I'm just about two hours north of Sydney, so it's the second uh, or one of, yeah, one of the oldest uh, settlements in New South Wales. It's about 1804 oh. that was established. Yeah, with the uh, like convict uh, transport and stuff from England. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so there's a lot of history in the area. Yeah, that's uh, a lot that's, of good that's actually really cool. Yeah, you had a lot of, uh, I think that was the area, I believe, that a lot of the push-outs were coming from. So a lot of people were moving south, pushing north, trying to find new areas. In fact, I think it was out of New South Wales. They were trying to find, was it the Westward Trail or something like that, to try and go to the west side of Australia? Yeah, yeah, there were a few um, European explorers that went up through the mountains there. And tried to yeah map out the area and yeah they came through Newcastle where I'm from and um, that's where they came across the coal and that kind of thing. Oh wow, yeah. There's yeah. Uh, now Australia has a very wild history. I can honestly say it that way. I don't understand why anyone would want to turn that area into a prison colony, but that's originally what it was. Uh, yeah. It turned out, uh, you know. Um, that it ended up being one of the most beautiful areas in the world. A lot of people travel down to you guys to uh, to spend the winters from us, us northern folk. Yeah, <laughs> very warm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so up here it gets to about uh, freezing, down below freezing, but at the same time in Australia, you guys are just entering your summer months right now, right? Yeah, uh, yesterday it was about 36 degrees Celsius, which is... Almost at 100 Fahrenheit, I think, so oh, it's almost summer, just getting through spring. That's fantastic. Now, you're actually able to get out, and um, I mean, I was just talking with you just briefly before the show. You were out bottle hunting today, so you were yeah. you were out uh, finding, uh, I guess you found a bottle dump somewhere in the lo- lo- uh, nearby. I was going to say locally, but that just did not want to come out. Yeah, uh, it was about half an hour drive, but it was definitely worth it. Uh, digging through the heat and stuff went through about three liter, three liters of water. But, uh, oh, yeah, came up with a few nice finds. Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah, that's one of those things that I really want to get into. I just wish I could find a bottle dump somewhere around here. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to be moving around now. Um, where? I know that I've seen so many videos from you. You've got, I don't even know how many videos you've got online right now. But you do metal detect all over the place, from fields to wooded areas to beaches. You go all over the place. Uh, what is your favorite area to metal detect? Um, well, probably my favorite area would be like um, house site demolitions, where they've demolished an old house to make way for a new one, because mm-hmm. it's kind of like uh, saving the history from the the construction work that's about to go down. Yeah, definitely. I love that as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you can come across old bottles there as well from people throwing it under the house and that kind of thing. <laughs> under Yeah, underneath the rafters in the house because you guys don't yeah. have many basements, do you? Uh, no, the houses are usually like up on um, like a tall brick foundation or stone foundation. Yeah. To keep, like, yeah, to get cool air in from underneath. Oh, that's, that's actually kind of cool, smart. Um, now, yeah. what's the best find that you've found at one of these sites yet? Um, so... Up um, closer into the town, I found a uh, convict, like red coats button, like a um, it's called a forty eighth regiment of foot button from eighteen eighteen, and that was a pretty interesting find because I didn't uh, realize what it was until I got home, and that's like all about the research and that kind of thing. So, um, what did it? It ended up being a button from an actual convict's coat. It was uh, like the guards of the convict, yeah, the red coats, like British red coats, yeah. Oh wow, so that's really like, fantastic! So you yeah, were really obviously the history of the area. Now, was I don't know how this was set up. Was there like a prison area for them, or was it? Did they basically just have them build like a little encampment area where they were basically able to run around free, or how was that? Do you know um, anything? Yeah, from from what I've like heard and what I know of, um, there was like a main kind of settlement, but not really like high walls and stuff. Because if you ran, um, if you tried to run away, you'd probably wouldn't last very long anyway. <laughs> but um, and then from there, they'll take them out to build like um, other smaller settlements and farms and that kind of thing mm-hmm. down the river. Yeah. That's actually yeah. that's actually pretty cool. Now I have heard about uh, you know, some of the the history of Australia. Very uh, brief stuff, mostly a lot of the dark stuff. We have uh, comedians over here. Uh, they do a show called The Dollop. It's a podcast, and they tend to come down to Australia quite a bit. And um, yeah. they do a lot of the Australian history, and it's actually rather interesting. I mean, you guys have had a tumultuous history as much as the United States has as far as taking over land, which doesn't belong to us just because of the yeah. dollar. But um, now you, but that the good thing is, on the flip side, that does give you the ability to go out and metal detect sites and find history that goes all the way back to the settlement of the area, which I think is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it's um, quite amazing. Even along some of the beaches, you can come across uh, like Aboriginal history mm. that dates back thousands of years. Oh, jeez. That is fantastic. I love that. Um, now, you are like me. You're a relic hunter first and foremost. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, have you donated any of the stuff that you found to local areas or museums or uh, anything that you've been able to give up? Uh, yeah, I have actually. There's a um, quite a large fort up on the hill just at the um, mouth of the port uh, in town. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's a like a, a World War II fort that was uh, bomb, actually bombed by the Japanese during World War II. Oh, um, wow. And I've come across a small tag that had the like the number of the regiment that was there, and I've been able to donate that, and that's in the museum there at oh, the moment. That's fantastic. That's really good. Yeah, I've been trying. One of the things that I want to do is I want to get down to Australia. Um, my unit, my military unit, was down there in World War II before they started paratrooping, uh, doing, you know, airborne operations to the north uh, on the island hopping expeditions but they were located not about a hour away from you i believe it was uh, it was the 173rd airborne located down there i want to i'm going to get there i know where the base is or was it's now a wild uh, wilderness and try and metal detect the area and get some of those relics back to the families yeah now, uh, as far as detecting itself, what is? Do you have probably one of the most surprising finds besides the the guards button? Uh, what would be the most amazing thing that you have found that you would say it might not be the best, but it might be the most amazing? Yeah. Um, yeah well, a lot of the best finds come when you least expect it. Um, about a year ago, I was detecting a. Um, demolition site permission mm-hmm. like a house demolition and uh yeah i was just detecting along i've got a few victorian uh, 1800s coins and some old belt buckles and relics and that kind of thing and then out the top of the ground i saw the rim of a um an old glass bottle and on my to find like bucket list i had a cod bottle which is like a marble bottle marble stopper bottle huh. which um they're, they're hard to find intact because the 
kids used to smash the top off to get the marble out. Anyway, I just randomly came across this um, marble bottle on this demolition site, and I was extremely excited, as you can see in the video that I've uploaded. And, yeah, that was, that was one of the most – just random and exciting finds. I was definitely not expecting that one. I'm definitely going to have to look into that one because that sounds actually kind of odd. Is it like the the marble is in the bottle itself and then as it tips, it stops it? Yeah, it's like um, the marble's... The marble's... <laughs> yeah, next to my neighbor's dog. Uh, the marble's in the top of the bottle and then uh, to open it, it's from about the 1890s, to open it, uh, they push the marble in and then uh, the marble's held there because it's... Um, like aerated water yeah um and then yeah when you tip it back to drink it it gets caught by these little um nub things inside the bottle yeah it's quite interesting that's that's kind of weird i've never heard of that before i'm definitely gonna have to check that video out now um you've been a lot of people will actually say that you're probably one of the best known metal detectors in australia uh you have been detecting and gaining followers left and right um what do you know what your current uh, subscription status is up to um so yeah i haven't really uploaded that much within the last year and i'm just starting to again now trying to do the weekly uploads oh. so uh it's been kind of frozen for a bit but i think it's at about 2700 at the moment congratulations on youtube Congratulations. That's fantastic. Being able to reach that many people. Now, do you happen to get down south and go um, gold prospecting at all as well? Uh, yeah. About three weeks ago, I went southwest and did a bit of panning and that kind of thing. How did that go? Yeah. yeah it was pretty. It was quite fun and yeah, found a few flakes. Oh, really? Yeah, that's one yeah. of the things. I know a lot of people go down to the south of Australia and uh, gold prospect down there. Uh, a lot of people will actually use metal detectors to try and find nuggets. I guess there's nuggets just sitting around on the ground down there? Uh, yeah, in the in Victoria, in the Golden Triangle, there's always like big nuggets and that kind of thing coming out that you hear about on the news. Um, and then also just west of Sydney, out near like Dubbo and Mudgee, yeah. which is right like out out in the central west there's always uh, gold and that kind of thing out there to be found well i'll tell you what i'll just go ahead and pack up and come down uh sound like i'm gonna be moving out there to the golden triangle uh, <laughs> yeah i gotta do something to make some money around here <laughs> But yeah, um, now, uh, when was the last time uh, you are actually friends with one of our old, um, one of the original founders of GDA, uh, Pommy Down Under? Have you been able to be in touch with him recently? Uh, Glenn, yeah, it's been about <laughs> yeah, two I gotta years do something since I've to make some money around in, here. Uh, in person, but yeah, I've seen his stuff online on Facebook. <laughs> Kept in contact, yeah. still Facebook friends and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Now, um, what's your what's your plans coming up in the next? I don't know, couple of weeks. You going back out metal detecting? Uh, you got any place in mind that you you're gonna hit? Yeah, well, um, I'm in my final year of high school, so that's kind of taken priority at the moment. But um, the the Christmas holidays are coming up, like the the large six week holidays. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that'll be right in the middle of summer. So, hopefully, I'll get a lot of detecting in there. Maybe try some new stuff like uh, underwater detecting and that kind of thing. Ooh, that'd be fun. Where are you going to yeah. be going over there? Going out to uh, where the shipwrecks were on the uh, I think it's the northeast coast up there, right? Where my yeah, shipwrecks are. Yeah. Uh, hopefully heading up near Brisbane in Queensland yeah. for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, that would be really fun. You getting one of those uh, small underwater detectors, or are you going to be getting? Uh, I can't remember which one it is. It's the one with all the knobs on it. I can't remember. I'm horrible with the names of these detectors. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Garrett Sea Hunter or something. Oh yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see it quite a bit in uh, television shows and stuff like that. Well, I hope. Yeah. You, uh, a bit. Hope you find uh, the last wreck of whatever. Uh, <laughs> maybe the Queen's payroll back in the 1800s, Victoria's payroll that went missing. Who knows? A big, big bag of sovereigns, cold sovereigns. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, that, that sounds like it'd be fun heading up north. Uh, have you ever detected up in that area at all? Uh, yeah, I've, I've been to um, around the Brisbane area quite a few times and been up there on the um, 
the beaches and uh, done a bit of World War Two detecting because there's a lot of World War Two areas around there, yeah. like training camps and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's uh, the general direction where the camp that I was talking about is a little bit. I believe it's uh, north of you. It wasn't too far from the coast, right in the uh, the wooded area. Uh, yeah. Off it, I think it was just south of Brisbane, actually. Oh yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of World War II history up there. Uh, a lot of people don't know that the Americans went there and uh, yeah. set up and were preparing for what was called the Island Hopping Campaign in uh, 1942, where they started in Australia and just started pushing north, one island after the other. And so there's a lot of stuff left behind in those those woods. I, I've seen... Uh, I know that you've gone out, you found some bullets in bullet casings in one of your videos. Pommy and his wife were out, uh, they found some bullet and bullet casings in old training areas as well. So, yeah, stuff's, stuff is out there. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm wishing you the best of luck, yeah, and maybe if you find some dog tags or American dog tags, let me know. I got some good connections, and maybe we can get them back to the owners or the families uh, of them. Yeah. But yeah, that'd be great. That's what it's all about. Exactly. Reconnecting the history, yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what I love about it. Um, I'm a relic hunter. I know Dave D of uh, Team USA is also a relic hunter now, and uh, it's the history that really drives me to it to be able to find it. The mystery of the history, I guess you could say as well. Um, yeah. Once you get something in your hand, then you suddenly realize that you're the first person in who knows how many years to actually hold something. Yeah, and then you get home and uh, spend hours researching it. <laughs> and cleaning. <laughs> and then yeah, you don't want to damage it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, as far as cleaning and stuff, what do you, what kind of techniques do you use for cleaning anything that you find? Um, so it's, it's kind of different with uh, a lot of things. With the older things, I try not to cl- like um, try not to clean it too much to damage it. But if it's a, uh, only 50 years old or something... Um, I can, uh, like with the silvers and stuff, it would just be bicarb soda and that kind of thing if it's not worth too much. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, with the older uh, fines, that usually tend to um, just keep it how it is. Yeah. Uh, but with the bottles today, um, that was – someone commented on my video yesterday on one of my videos about using bicarb soda and vinegar. So I, I gave that a try, and uh, yeah, it worked out quite well for the ones that you can't really get in, get inside to clean the insides. Oh, really? So does that it basically using bicarb soda and vinegar? It would kind of foam up. Yeah. Um, so that actually does kind of scrub the inside as well. Yeah, it did. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely share that one. That's a good thing to know. I was wondering because I have a small brown one. It was an old uh, hair tonic bottle. Uh, that I found, and I've been. It has um, some kind of a soil kind of pasted in one of the bottom corners inside. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering how I could get that out because the hole is way too small. It's just basically one of those dripper holes in the bottle. Um, so yeah, that sounds like I might might try that out. And the uh, the other one for bottles is that I tried today was just putting rice in it, grains of rice, and then a little bit of water and swishing it around. Really. Yeah, because some some people put pebbles in, but it seems to like scratch the glass up yeah, a bit. So uh, I would think with so. I would think so. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really uh, good with bottles. I like I said, I don't have any kind of bottle dumps around here that I know of yet. Um, yep. I will be trying to find some. I know uh, a couple permissions that I'm going to be trying to get, and maybe they know where an old trash dump or even an outhouse was that I might be able to dig. Um, I know that sounds weird, digging and metal detecting an outhouse, but you'd be surprised what falls into those things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, uh, Jacob, um, I really do appreciate you coming back onto the show. This has been absolutely fantastic, catching back up. Uh, we're definitely going to get back in touch with you again real soon. Um, I'm working on hopefully getting down south in the next couple years. We'll see. Um, we've got to see how things work out, and uh, maybe I can get down under and hook up with you in 42 and go metal detect a couple places. Yeah, it sounds awesome. Yeah, I definitely would. Uh, maybe I can get you guys to come with me, and we can go locate that old uh, military encampment. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. All right. Uh, now, how can people locate you on Facebook and YouTube? Uh, 
Tell them where they can uh, hit you up. Yeah, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. It's all just uh, digging Australia. That's the, having having that moniker is just fantastic. You really captured that early on, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, everybody, this is Jacob. Ur. He is uh, a long time, long time fan of GDA and a really good friend of ours. Uh, you might remember us always referring to him as Kid Kangaroo. Make sure you hit us, hit him up on Digging Australia all across every social media. And uh, thank you so much, Jacob, for coming on to the show. As always, it's been a pleasure. But Thanks for having me on. All right. So, Lance, I'm going to send it back over to you in the studio. Well, all right. Thank you so much, Lance. All right. Uh, that was uh, Jacob Boer. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Jacob. Really, really fun talking with you. Uh, the kid is in his last year of school. He's been metal detecting for almost 10 years now. Uh, he's been uh, friends of ours uh, for the last, oh, uh, many, many years. Uh, we like I said, we first talked to him when he was about 12 years old. This kid is doing amazing things down under, and uh, we always wish him the best. Uh, we're going to do a quick break. I'm going to try and get a hold of uh, Luke Higgins if he's out there. But uh, for now, uh, we got another quick commercial. We'll be right back. Are you tired of never finding that new permission? Do you look around and wonder if there's a permission out there for you? Look no further. GDA has the answer for you. The new GDA Permission Finder 117 has the ability to locate the best possible permission for you. That's right. Using the newest in wireless technology, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth technology mixed with the blackest of magics, the GDA Permission Finder 117 can locate the perfect permission for you without you even needing to try. Simply take the small device and turn it on. Instantly, the captured ghosts inside are bombarded with radio, electric, and magnetic waves, which then sends out a Bluetooth wave that your Apple Watch can then pick up a detailed list of all the things located in a property's grounds, making it easier to choose the correct area to metal detect. Is it private property? No problem. Hitting the possession button sends out a possession spirit to enter the property's owner, which will then instantly give you access to the land. It's that simple. Call now and order your own GDA Permission Finder 117. Only 20 easy payments of 1995 and your soul. That's right, 20 payments of 1995 and your soul. We'll get you the GDA Permission Finder 117. But wait, call now and get absolutely free the patented pinpointer lasher. Always losing your pinpointer in the fields and woods? Well, no more. This wonderful new invention uses a line of woven polyester fibers and a patented metal hook end to attach to your pinpointer, lashing it to your finds pouch. Normally, this lasher, with its amazing technology, would be sold by GDA for the amazing price of $49.95, but it's yours today for free with the purchase of the GDA Permission Finder 117. So act now! GDA does not endorse ever using the GDA Permission Finder 117 as it does contain dark magics and upset trapped spirits in a small contained environment. You said the GDA Permission Finder 117 must be done at one's own risk. GDA is not responsible in the event of a zombie outbreak, vampires invading the town or the local town entering an alternate reality. Use only as directed. <laughs> All right. That was just a little bit of fun for you guys. I'm going to be trying to make some more of these. Now, right now, I got uh, somebody on the line right now. Um, I want to talk with him because I know something that went on today, and I want to see exactly how it went. Uh, Luke, are you there? Hey, Lon. Yeah. Hi. Oh, he's got he's, hello. Yeah, it seems like you're hello. Yeah, it seems like you're in a bad connection area. Ah, oh, we might have lost him. We'll get back with him eventually. Hello, hello. Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, maybe we'll be able to get back in touch with him here soon. Uh, I think he might have some news for us. Uh, well, I'm not entirely too sure, but we'll find out here just shortly. Uh, now. Uh, if you guys want to come on to the GDA Radio Podcast, you just need to let me know. I am open 
and available every Sunday for a live show. At, I do it in the evening, my time, which would be the morning, your time in the United States. And depending upon where you are in the world, uh, we can definitely either pre record as we did with Jacob today or we can do it live. So just let me know if you'd like to come on to the show or you know anybody that you'd like to have onto the show. Coming up soon, with luck, we're going to have Digger Don coming back onto the show as well, which I know you guys are going to love. We're going to have, uh, hopefully, Luke Higgins coming in today. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure if that's going to work out. Uh, he might be on the road or moving around and um, might not have the best ability to get in touch. Uh, now, if you want to come on to the show now, I am available to talk to as we speak. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of the finds that I've seen posted on the group. Now, I want to give uh, a guy named John Hamilton a really, really, really big shout out. Uh, John Hamilton recovered an 1850 $20 gold coin while detecting a field in Oklahoma. Yes, I did say that. A $20 1850 gold coin. This thing is in great shape. It's got some nicks and burrs. You can you can tell. I mean, it's been in the ground for a good 150 years plus. Um, so this thing, but the condition is still really good. You can still read Liberty on the uh, on the crown of Liberty, and uh, she is doing really really good. I want to give uh, John Hamilton a really big shout out about that one. Now, uh, 42, our great 42, I uh, asked you guys who was out going out uh, metal detecting. Oh, looks like we got Luke coming in now. Let's see. Uh, let's see if this is going to go. All right. So we are connecting uh, Mr. Higgins. Uh, Luke, are you are you though? He hung up again. And there's another call. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Let's see if this is going to work this time. All right. Uh, Mr. Higgins, are you on the line? Luke. And it's ended again. All right. Well, well, what we'll do is we'll get in touch with him in the next week, and uh, we'll get him on the show for sure um, next weekend. Let me let him know. All right. Uh, we'll get him on the show next weekend. Um, oh, hold on. Let's try this one more time. Um. Luke, you there? Hey, Lon. All right, there he is. I had to switch over to my tablet, so you might have a bad audio on me, <laughs> but everybody else has really good for you. Yeah, it's me, mate. I'm on the motorway, so uh, hopefully. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a really bad uh, connection. Hold out, but, uh, yeah. I think we lost you again, brother man. You never know. Yeah, what we're going to have to do is I think we're going to have to get back in touch with you yeah. next weekend during the week and uh, find out all the news and information. Let's uh, let's get you on the show next weekend, and uh, we'll definitely uh, pass out this news. Okay, cool. Excellent. Cheers, Lance. Yeah, Thank cheers. You, yeah, thanks for calling. All right, so uh, we got Luke coming on the on the show next week, and I know they got some uh, some possible good news. Uh, I only know that it was a fifty fifty chance for the stuff that we were uh, that was gonna go on today. Um, now I don't know if it went through or not. Uh, this is something between him and Dave Sadler and Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine, which are uh, extremely close partners with uh, Global Detection Adventures. Make sure you check them out. That's archmdmag.com. A-R-C-H-M-D-M-A-G dot com. Check that out. Really good stories. Really fantastic stuff. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go back to some of these finds that I haven't been able to cover. So 42 was asking people, you know, uh, 
this uh, yesterday, you know, if you guys were out metal detecting this weekend, what were you find? And of course, Huntress Kimmy Dubay. Kimmy Dubay, I'm sorry, girl. I love you. I love your husband, Scott. But really, you just keep showing off. You do understand that, right? Another hammy. She pulled up another hammered coin from King John from 1199 to the early 1200s. It is getting sickening how many of these hammered coins you guys are finding. You do understand that, right? I know you're listening right now. Give me a thumbs up. I know that you're listening as we talk. It is getting sick. (laughs) It is getting sick seeing between you and Scott all these things. Oh, man. But anyway, you know what? It's worth it. You guys, you guys go out. You guys are hammering these fields and finding some of these great finds. And uh, I love you guys for doing it. You guys are absolutely fantastic. Now, if either one of you two want to come on the show, just give me a buzz on uh, Messenger. Uh, We'll definitely talk with you. Uh, We know, we all know that uh, you guys do love... uh, you know, uh, your metal detecting and the stuff that you're finding is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, now, uh, now I'm going to keep going down. <laughs> Obviously, it was Halloween this last weekend. Now, uh, Brian Brown, uh, drown, excuse me, drown, Brian drown. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just butchered that name. Just really bad. But he finally had a chance to go out detecting yesterday for the first time in a long while, he says. Uh, An old, heavily hunted park. But uh, he looked for the deep signals, and he found two 1942 Mercury dimes and a 14-karat gold ring with a small diamond, all in the same hole. Uh, That is just unbelievable i couldn't even imagine that i mean first two 1942 uh mercury dimes and then uh, a 14 karat gold ring with a small diamond on it what are the chances of all three of those being in the same hole that is just unbelievable uh steph uh tangue you know i've talked about your name before girl i just cannot get it right steph (laughs) tangue anyway uh she she was one of the top finds a couple weeks ago if you haven't checked that check it out um but she has another early 1900s uh, Army officer's eagle belt plate, um, which was based on the 1874 regulation style. Uh, it was found at a virgin site about three inches down, right next to the old cellar hole, which is a beautiful shape. It's got a little bit of dent and dings on it, but uh, overall, it is a in great shape. Um so we're going to be uh, calling Luke and Laura right now. Um, in fact, I'm going to give uh, uh, not not Luke and Laura, uh, Kimmy and Scott. Man, all these all these married people in the UK metal detecting. So let's get them on the let's get them on the show, um, and uh, yeah, let's talk with them real quick and uh, see how they're doing over there. Talk about this new hammered. Uh, you know, that um, they found out there, I guess yesterday they found this. Uh, Mistress Kimberly Dubay, is that you? John from 1199. <laughs> yeah, you just got to rub it in again, don't you? <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> All right. Hey, um, now you got to remember that there's a slight delay between the computer and the phone. So if you talk with me on the phone, we'll be able to uh, communicate a lot easier, or just mute the uh, the live video feed, and uh, it would make it a lot easier for us to communicate uh, easily. Is that better? Yeah, it's absolutely better. You're right on the air. So you're live uh, with all of us on the GDA show right now. Now, we talked, uh, we asked uh, people that were going out what you found yesterday, and you were uh, quick to respond with an 1199 hammered coin. It was a King John hammered coin. 
the so King John. King John is the one that's typically uh, thought about for it was the Robin Hood uh, 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 legends, correct? Yes. Okay, so King, that's this is about the time of you know everybody's talking about uh, Robin Hood. Just this is just to give people an idea of the time frame of this. Um, that is an unbelievable coin. So we're talking, we're still in the Crusades when this coin was minted. Um, and you guys are the first ones to dig this up and hold this in your hand in 900 years. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was like 800, 850 years ago. It's in, uh, it was, it was during the time of the signing of the Magna Carta. It's when King John signed and owned France for the first time. Yeah. It's just, it goes so far back then. From um, 1199 to 1216. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. So that was, that was the, mm-hmm. the range of his reign. Uh, now, at yeah. the time, he was also going on crusades and everything, I believe, is the fourth crusade that was going at this time. Um, so, yeah, King John was also on the Crusades as well. So he was gone for, I think it was about three years for during his reign. And, um, yeah, this is all, this history, this is the stuff that I love metal detecting about. Because, and you guys are finding this, and you guys, I'm really sick of seeing you guys post on my group. <laughs> because, <laughs> Sorry. Don't be hating. No, no don't. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be hating, but don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, this is the kind of history I love. Um, I mean, you can see the the connection is just unbelievable. It's just amazing to think, like when you see a picture of somebody from the Crusades, you, you think of a knight in full body chainmail with the big red cross going across his chest, and he's got his shield, and he's got the, the the helmet with that nose piece coming down, and you just think maybe that guy. Yeah. One of those guys are holding this coin. You know, it's amazing. The Crusades. It could have been exactly. anybody that was walking around. And this is a silver piece. And what was this? A sovereign? It was just, uh, I think, I don't even, I think it was just a penny. I think it was a penny or something. Yeah, it was a penny. Silver penny. Yeah, but it, did, it was so, it was so, it's so long ago. It didn't even have mints yet. They had moneyers. Yeah. So people were specifically signed to create these things. Yeah, and they were they all so like. Made. Blessed from the king in order to hammer these coins. And yeah. It, it's just unbelievable. And so, yeah, a penny at this time is like probably a whole month's wage for somebody. Oh, yeah. Exactly. But two feet, and I mean two feet away from Atlantis, Scott dug up a quarter of a hammer. Really? Yeah. A, a, yeah. Quarter, a quarter hammered. And I, I can't identify it, but it, it may be, you know, along those lines. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that but, uh, is just... it, it wasn't one of our usual permissions we go to. We actually uh, we went up north a little bit, a 20-minute ride, oh. and uh, we hit an old, old farm we went to we, with uh, dirt UK Dirt Fishing Rally uh, like three years ago. So we said, you know what, let's go back there and check it out because a lot of good things came out. And oh, next there thing you go. Know, yeah. So that's there's a connection to Luke and Laura right there. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> was, it, that was great. What a weekend. Yeah, that's fantastic. You've been getting out there. Two wonderful pieces of history. Do you think it's probably around the same time as the King John Penny? Definitely. Oh, that's beautiful. Definitely. You guys are doing great things. Uh, I, I'm really jealous of you guys. I'm, I'm always going to be jealous of you two. Um, doing great things mm-hmm. over there. We'll, we'll just keep sharing some good stuff for you so you can just keep getting jealous. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of these days I'm coming over there to join you. So we're going to be hitting those fields together. So, Oh, yeah, you're definitely you're, – you're, you're in. As soon as you get land, just, you know, turn the detector on. We're gone. <laughs> definitely. Uh, we're you definitely going to be doing you this. Take that. You've got to experience it for yourself. I mean, every time we're going out, we're finding something. So you're definitely going to find yeah, something. Yeah, I know? know this. I've been seeing all your posts. Driving me crazy. Mm. <laughs> but we'll definitely... I don't know if, Luke, don't know if Luke's li- listening, but it tell, uh, look, it was on the same field that you found the silver thimble. Oh, there you go, Luke. Luke, uh, they're out there on your old field from the UK Dirt Fishing Rally, and the same field where you found a silver thimble, they found this yeah. 1199 to 1216 King John Hammered Penny. Silver. It's penny. a big, thick, thick too. It's big and thick. Really? 
Yeah, it's, really it's like it was when it was struck. It was off struck. Yeah, so the cross is actually a cross is actually a quarter of the way up from the end. So it smashed the metal forward. So it's a big ring of thick silver on the edge. It's yeah, really, can, really. I'm looking at it right now. It's it's uh, really, re- you can tell it's not definitely not centered at all. The the backside with the cross, uh, the the head seems to be a little bit right. better centered, but the backside with the cross is definitely way off bottom right. Yeah, way off. I don't know if that makes it a rare strike or anything, but it's 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 identifiable. Yeah, it definitely yeah. is. And it came out. It just came out. The way you see it, that's the way it came out. It's I know, beautiful. I can't believe it. Yeah. There was no black on it. There was <laughs> nothing. Yeah, it didn't have to wipe nothing. It just came out exactly like that. It's beautiful. Like, beautiful. I mean, you can definitely see King John sitting on there, the crown on his head. Uh, I think it says... <laughs> Uh, I can't rem- see tell exactly what it says above him, and then the backside you yeah. can definitely see some of the uh, the old writing, the cross on it. It's just in beautiful shape. Really good job finding this one, guys. Absolutely thank, jealous. Thank yeah, we really enjoyed seeing your hammer too. You you found a hammer. Yeah, recently. that thing's gorgeous. Yeah, I was, uh, got lucky. I haven't been able to get out detecting in the last couple of weeks, but I got a new place uh, near my house actually, where I'm gonna. Probably go hit next weekend, maybe the weekend after. I got to start uh, renovating the inside of the house before it gets too cold. So we'll see exactly yeah. how many times I can uh, go out detecting, but we'll see. Maybe I can go hit yeah, it this weekend. You're in, you're in some old country as well, Lance. You're, you're definitely going to find some good stuff out yeah. there. Yeah, I'm definitely. I moved out of the city. That was the good thing for me. I moved out of the city into the old country. This is the old wine yeah. fields that, uh, you know, when the Romans came up and they could not come into this area. And then finally, once they left the area, they decided, well, you know what? We're going to keep making wine. Uh, that was the one good thing that you Romans left behind. So they moved the wine uh-huh. production into our valley. And um, I'm completely surrounded by vineyards that are seven, eight, nine hundred years old. Um, so oh, wow. there's a lot of history to be dug up around here. So, oh, um, yeah, that sounds really good, man. That sounds really good. Yeah, definitely is. And we're outside of the World War II bombing area, so that's going to be another good thing, too. Yeah, so you don't find any uh, live ordnance. Yeah, well, I'm not worried about that. It's the flak because of all the anti-aircraft guns. Uh, what, oh, goes, yeah, yeah. what goes up and explodes has to come back down somewhere. <laughs> oh, it'll be shot more everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. You can get that. You can get that. So anyway, yeah, I think uh, I think I'm going to let you guys go. We're coming close to the end of the show, and uh, uh, you guys get back out there next weekend. Keep sharing those wonderful finds that you guys are getting. I know uh, 42. Uh, she just loves your guys' finds. Uh, she's always commenting. Oh, that's cool. Oh, fantastic. That's great. Thank you guys for having us tonight. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Thanks for coming on to the show. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hang up with you guys, go over and uh, check um, check in with the rest of the guys on the GDA Facebook group, and then I guess we'll call it an evening, get this thing out there tomorrow. Sounds good, Lance. Hey, listen, we appreciate what you do, man. Keep on striving, keeping that show going, you know what I mean? Global Detection Adventures rocks! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, as always, you're always welcome to come on this show. Talk to you later. All right, Houston. Take care, Lance. Good night, guys. Good night. All right, that was Huntress Kimmy and Scott Dubay out of out of the UK. Two wonderful people. I uh, love these guys. Uh, they're really good friends of mine. I can see Patrick's on the on the show. Thank you for coming in, Patrick. Hope you're in a good good mood. Uh, I'm going to be cutting it off, uh, calling it for the evening. We're at 48 minutes into the show. Every single one of you have made this show absolutely. Whoa. <laughs> have made this show fun as always to uh, to talk about and go over some of the stuff that you guys have been finding out there uh, thank you so much for coming in and uh, checking the GDA radio podcast as always I ask you guys to go over to wherever you download this and leave a comment leave a rating this helps me 
uh, get people like Rudus Alter Seventy One to sponsor the show. It costs uh, it costs me money out of my pocket each and every single week uh, uh, to pay for this show, and uh, during the course of a year, it comes up to about uh, about two hundred dollars. And uh, we're going to be going around and asking you guys if you guys would like to donate and help keep this show on the air uh, because uh, this is a hobby for me but I love doing this and helping you guys out letting you guys reach out and talk with each other so if you do that go over to iTunes leave a comment leave a uh leave a rating for us it really helps us out if you download from google or anywhere else do the same thing please it really does help us out but as always if i haven't got in touch with you every single one of you rock especially the following people andy o'neill matt howell you guys are the best uh huntress kimmy dubay wayne peterson and scott dubay you guys know that you're in the general ranks, and uh, we got other people that are out there as well. Uh, Patrick White, you are the Admiral Patrick White, and uh, you are one of the greatest fans that we've had, one of my good friends. And uh, anyone else that's out there, uh, Siren Kimmy, I know you're out there somewhere hiding. Uh, make sure that you uh, let me know. I know that you're out there. Um we want to get you on the show again, girl. I know you're finally coming out of the out of hiding and everything else, and uh, I think it's great. Everybody's loving the fact that you're coming back, and uh, we definitely want to hear more from you. But that's it for me, everybody. Uh, come back on the show next week. It looks like we're going to have Wayne Peterson coming on the show. He's going to be talking about the WWATS, the Watts. Uh, we're going to be uh, talking about gold prospecting and gold digging and everything else. So make sure you join us next Sunday at the same time, uh, 7 o'clock Central Europe, 6 o'clock in the UK, uh, 1 o'clock on the East Coast, 12 o'clock Central, and just do the math from that point. Uh, if you're in Australia, uh, you're uh, going to get it uh, sometime live next month. I don't know how far ahead from me you guys are. It's actually 10 hours. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. But thanks to every single one of you. You're the best. And from me to every single one of the coin lickers out there, this is Lance Goolsby. We're going to see you guys out on the field. Let's dig it up, y'all.